when you come to GCBS and you get your hair cut here, I want you to feel like you're part of a, a special club. It's like a like a, a social club that's not private, that everybody's a member. You know, you're going to another barbershop and you're thinking of leaving. We want you to feel like you're you're welcome here as soon as that door opens. Most barbershops go to, it's a, it's a little bit, like the walls are a little clean, you know. Not really much conversation, you know, everybody's kind of sitting there on their cell phones these days. So yeah. that's what I kind of like about here. It's more old school. I like to talk as it is. So I come in here and I just chit chat with everybody, listen, and it's just it's just a nice place for kind of like a guy's man cave almost, if you will. How this all started was uh, I used to cut Paul Diamond's grandfather's hair. And he told me how his grandson loved barbering and that he used to cut hair in a garage when he was a young kid in high school and all his friends and everything. And it went in one ear and out the other, but I said, oh, that's great, you know. I had been in the business for quite a while. So his grandfather was my customer for many years. And as Paulie got older, he went to barber school. And I didn't know he had went to barber school. So his grandfather told me, he says, uh, my grandson graduated from barber school in Rochester and he was working for some other uh, uh, salon, and he, it really wasn't a good situation, I didn't think. So he says, would you mind uh, talking to him and maybe putting him on? So we did. There was old Hemstrat's Bakery across the road. Uh, we went across the street, and I liked what I seen immediately. He was a gentleman. He loved the bit. You could tell he loved barbering, which is uh, part of the main, main deal, you know. So uh, we put him on. And he was with me for 10 years. And uh, when I decided to uh, sell the shop, he was first in line and uh, couldn't have been a better fit. He's really expanded it. We have the young, we have the old, and we're working with younger barbers now, you know, and uh, they're great barbers. They, 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 they know their, their, their business, believe me when I tell you. Ever since I was young, I always wanted my own, my own barber shop. I had very, uh, very definitive things that I wanted out of a shop. I wanted a big shop with a lot of guys, but an old school feel. Um, there's not many shops like that in the area. Center Barbershop, the old shop as we call it, um, had that. It was a big shop, big old school shop. Um, so that was a shop that I wanted to be in. So I, I worked there for, for a while, but I had my own ideas of things that I wanted to do. So when the time was right, you know, I, I bought that shop and, and moved us up here. I've worked under Tony Anuch and watched the way he does things. He's a very old school, traditional barber. Um, in my definition, um, you know, as a young kid, he was what I wanted to be. You'll hear these young barbers like, oh yeah, I cut. You know, to me that, that just irks me because uh, I respect the profession of what a master barber is. I took all of that old school stuff that I absolutely loved and just, you know, picked his brain constantly, watching what he does, you know, watch his interaction with customers, you know, watch you know, his style of cutting hair. Um, and I put my new school, you know, I'm, I'm a young guy, so I put that, that edge on it. Um, over the last few years, the younger barbers have put a twist on those, those old school haircuts. The dapper cut, the, uh, the comb over, the, the neo-traditional haircuts, um, if you look back in the 40s, it's the same haircut. We just kind of put a new twist on it. Uh, I think that because I have that haircut, people look and a lot of the moms will say, could you just give him what you have? We like to think of GCBS as like a safe haven for beards. Your beard is safe with us. There's a lot of barber shops that, um, that don't really want to touch your beard. And a lot of those places, if you allow them to touch your beard, you're gonna regret it. A buzz cut you can do yourself. Anyone who wants a buzz cut, you know, they can do it in their, their, their basement. That's not really a good look. That's a sloppy look. That's a I don't give a shit look. Um, why does everyone want to fade? It's a very clean, crisp look. It's a gentleman look. It's a I care about myself. Um, kind of just man maintenance. When you left barber school, you really didn't know how to cut hair. 
It was a six-month program. But you learned how to treat a customer, you know, with uh, finesse, with class. You treated everybody equal. And uh, you, uh, you learned a lot that way. As far as barbering, the experience in a real barber shop, that's when you really knew that uh, you didn't know that much coming out of barber school. Because barber school taught you the basics. But uh, when you get out in the, in the world, it's a little different. And half of it is barbering, and half of it is personality. You get to know people, their families, you know uh, what the kids are doing, when they're getting married, when they're getting divorced. I mean, you're like a, you're like a priest. You hear a lot of people's confession, and my, my uh, option of our uh, idea about it is you don't, you don't tell anybody somebody else's problem. You know, that's the best way to remain, and your customer to remain your customer because you don't want to hear from somebody else that the barber told them this and that, you know. A lot of people, different different uh, people from doctors to lawyers and even regular people come in here or normal people, they're just as important. The barber shop has been uh, well established now and I think he's going in the right direction. I was in the military for seven years. Every time I came home on leave, this is the only place I would go to. You know, I would look forward to coming home to these haircuts instead of the ones over in Europe or anything like that. So. I come from Louisiana. Uh, my family lives here, so I come here to uh, this place right here to get my haircut every time. You know, I get my haircut once a week, so when I'm here, it's nice to know that I can come to Utica and still get my haircut the same way I get a cut in Louisiana. It's, you know, from when you walk in the door, as soon as you walk in, Polly makes sure that, you know, you're, you don't go without being noticed, you know, and then between them having their conversations, you know, and talking to you, it's like you're, you're part of the group. I, I look back and I say, wow, I've been cutting hair for 10 years. Uh, this is my 10th year out of barber school getting my license. Uh, I got my license in 2006, and it's like 10 years, this guy's got 60. And then I see, you know, how they've developed over the years, and... It's awesome to see that, that some of the old guys can hold their own and then we got some younger guys that can't hold a beer. And that's just the way it is, you know what I mean? <laughs> Me and Pauly go back long enough to where if this shop didn't exist, we'd still be family. Uh, when Gary got on last year, um, the first couple hours he was in here, it felt like I, I knew him my whole life. Uh, he got along great. Mark started a few months ago and jumped right in just like Gary. This is a brotherhood. I choose to love these guys, and I love everyone at this shop. This is a, the, the best shop in the area to work at, and the best shop, period, to work at. Why? Because even if we're not working, I'm texting all the guys here. Even if we're not working, I'm calling them, oh, guess what happened? It's more of a brotherhood than a family. Um, you can't choose your family, but you can choose your brothers. Uh, Gary, Gary's my go-to. Um, was in here last week, ended up waiting 45, 50 minutes for Gary to open up, but it's worth it, you know, sitting there. Uh, a lot of laughs, um, a lot of playful jargon back and forth between the barbers and the customers that are waiting. Um, but Gary's been my go-to, I think, since day one. If you can't get a girlfriend, you need to change up your barber and come to Gentleman's Corner Barbershop. Well, my philosophy on barbering would be, I'm the guy that's gonna get you late. You know, I give you the haircut, that the girls dig and it's the haircut that you want you know you might be scrolling through pictures on instagram on your phone the internet whatever and you spot out a haircut that you might love you're like okay you know i want this haircut it's not we're always happy because we're acting but you come in here and your mind's off of things you come in here and you're not thinking about your problems you're thinking about getting that haircut done you're thinking about breaking gary's balls about something you're thinking about busting mom paul next and then mark down the line and get Ciotti involved and, you know, trying to keep all the boys laughing, trying to keep the customers happy, always trying to get a good conversation. We're a shop for everybody. You know, there's a barber for you. Doesn't matter how you want your hair cut. We are the barber shop for you. If you feel that you need a new look, you know, that you're, you're kind of lonely out there, that you're not the it man, that you're not everything you can be, you know, you come here and get your hair cut, we're gonna, we're gonna change your life. We're gonna make you look better. We're, once you look better, like once you have that haircut that, wow, I look good, your confidence level is gonna rise. You know, and that's what we want when we send you out that door, is we want you to walk out that door feeling good and ready to take on that job interview. You are know, ready to take that girl out that you're nervous, you know, to take on that date. We wanna give you that confidence to go out there and attack life.
in my heart I'd be a king. 